Hello and welcome to Mal Makes. Today we're going to talk about choosing an acrylic paintbrush. When you walk into that art supply store, it's really hard to know what to look for. You walk down that aisle of paintbrushes and there's just so many. So how do you know where to get started? Well, I think there's four important things to think about and four things that you should consider but they're kind of frivolous. The first important thing is size. Now if you're painting a large canvas and filling in big areas, of course then you're going to want a bigger paintbrush. If you're using a smaller canvas, you'll probably want something more on the medium side. And if you're doing tiny details on a big canvas or small canvas, you probably want an itty bitty tiny brush. Now if you're doing something like this canvas here that's 18 by 24, you probably want a good variety of paintbrush sizes. Something bigger to do the background, um, medium paintbrushes to fill in some bigger areas, and then tiny paintbrushes to do the itty bitty little details. The second thing to consider is shape. Now there's two shapes I use all the time in every painting. And then there's some shapes I use if I have like a very special application where I really need to use that style of paintbrush. And then there's other styles that personally I haven't really found a good use for in acrylic. They might be more suited for like a watercolor painter or if you were doing stenciling or something of that sort. And the two paintbrushes I use all the time are flats and rounds. I use flats from filling in backgrounds, just kind of filling in big areas because they leave a nice big mark on the canvas. Um, and sometimes I'll turn them 90 degrees and use them for grass, tree trunks, branches, anything that's kind of long and narrow and I need to keep straight. Um, and then for rounds, I use those for filling in some bigger areas and then I definitely use rounds for details. Occasionally I'll use fan brushes if I'm trying to paint Bob Ross style trees, but they also work really good for doing a grass texture on a surface. These other three shapes I use pretty rarely. Um, this one is a bright, and brights are very similar to flats. They just kind of have a curved edge towards the top, and you can use them just like a flat. Um, the second one is a filbert, and it's kind of round across the top, and it's really good for blending. Like if you are blending in clouds, um, or anything a bit smaller, it's not really good for blending in large backgrounds or anything of that nature. And this one is an angled. And angled brushes are good for small details, but personally I'd rather just switch to a tiny brush. The third thing to consider is bristle type. Now there's two main categories. We have natural bristles and then synthetic bristles. And each of those kind of have their own categories underneath them. On the natural side you have ox, sable, squirrel, pony, um, all sorts of different things on that side. And on the synthetic side you basically only have two, plastic and nylon, and then sometimes they use the word taclon, but synthetic bristles are all pretty much just man-made bristles. In general, you would want a stiffer paintbrush for acrylics because you want it to keep the paint on the outside of the brush, not soak it up like a watercolor brush. And you also want a stiff brush to push that paint around, like spreading it thin across the canvas. You don't want it to kind of sit in a pile in the corner. Um, so when I go and look for paintbrushes, I actually sit there and I test all of the bristles on each of the brushes. I'll bend them back and I'll let go and listen for a sound. So I can tell if it's stiffer or a softer brush. When I'm looking for a stiffer filament for my brush, um, I go into the store and test them out. These are both Simply Simmons 3 quarter inch flats, and this one down here is an extra firm filament, and then the one up here is not. And when they're brand new, you can tell them apart because this one is a bit more red, and then this one kind of has a gold bristle color. And I pick them up and I snap the bristles. And when you compare them like that, you can definitely hear the difference between the ones that are firmer and the ones that aren't. Um, and then to compare a super soft, cheaper brush like this one, this one sounds like this. So they're here in order of stiffness, and I tend to go for the ones that are more on this end of the scale. You can find stiff brushes in natural and synthetic, and personally, choosing between them is really a personal choice based on what you would prefer to use. Personally, I like synthetics because they wash out easier, they don't really hold the paint in like a natural bristle would, and also acrylic paint is very damaging to a paintbrush, so synthetics tend to hold up and last a bit longer because of that corrosive nature of acrylic. They also tend to be a little bit cheaper, so I like synthetics for that reason. The fourth important thing to consider, and perhaps most important, is price. I don't see the point in spending a ton of money on acrylic brushes. Um, the paint is very damaging to them, and also, like, you could ruin it on the first time just on accident or not washing it properly. So I wouldn't spend a ton of money on an acrylic brush. 
Now, if you see this acrylic brush that you really want and it's a bit more expensive and you have a coupon, it's on clearance, it's real cheap, go for it. But I wouldn't pay full price for something that's really expensive for acrylic. Um, now, kind of like a general rule I personally go by is for my bigger brushes, I look to spend maybe $8 to $15 on a bigger brush. My medium brushes, I spend like five to eight dollars and my tiny brushes may be like three to six dollars. Um, the tinier ones are harder to make so they don't get super cheap like corresponding to the other ones. That said, you will notice a difference in quality. Now if you have cheap brushes, I'm talking like dollar store ultra cheap brushes that you would maybe give to like little kids, that will be a lot different than a brush that you buy for maybe six dollars. Um, the cheaper brushes in general, they lose a lot of bristles. You'll find them in your paint, on your palette, everywhere. Um, and I have had that happen with some of my more expensive brushes, but it definitely happens with the cheap ones more often. Also, when you wash them, they don't really get their shape back. Um, so try and stay away from the really ultra cheap ones. Now onto the frivolous things that aren't as important, but they are definitely some things you should consider. The first is handle size. Paintbrushes come in a long handle and a short handle. Now, if you like standing or stepping back from your work, you may prefer a long handle so you can continue to work. But if you're working tabletop or up close, you might prefer a short handle. When I paint, I'm about this far from my canvas and with a long handle, I found that sometimes I hit myself in the face. The next thing is handle material. Now this is not only like how it feels to your skin, but also what it's made of. Um, so they're either wood or plastic and with wood, they might be raw, varnished or painted. Um, and the wood ones I think are a bit more comfortable between that and plastic, but if you leave them sit in water, which you shouldn't do, but the wood will swell up and the varnish or the paint will flake off. Now that doesn't happen with the plastic handled paintbrush, but um, either way, the glue inside the metal part of the brush breaks down when they soak in water, so don't do that. The texture of the handle might be something to consider when you're looking at wooden paintbrushes. The ones that are raw wood feel a bit more like a wooden pencil. If they're painted, they feel a bit more like plastic. And then sometimes they're varnished with this kind of sticky coating that feels like rubber. The third thing is handle shape. Now, most paintbrushes start bigger towards where you would put your fingers and then taper to a point at the opposite end. And this taper is more dramatic on some brushes, so it has like a better, bigger grip for your fingers and some of them have a smaller grip there. Also, you can sometimes find it in reverse where your fingers would go as extra tiny. Um, I have one brush like that and it's kind of strange to hold it. Um, some paintbrushes have like a rubber grip for your fingers and then I have a couple that actually have a bigger base towards like the pointy end and that would be good if you were like standing back and wanted to hold the brush from far back. The last thing, and this is totally frivolous, is color. Paintbrush handles come in all sorts of colors. I have dark purple, I have pearl, I have chrome, I have blue, green. They come in every different shade. Bristles also sometimes you can find in different colors, but for the most part, they're kind of dull looking because they're going to get stained anyway. But who wouldn't want a paintbrush in a fun color? In the end, you may not like the same paintbrush as me, and that's totally okay. Painting is really personal, and I think that's what's so cool about it. Everyone's going to be completely different. Um, but if you're struggling, when I first started doing Mal Makes, um, I had these very soft paint brushes. It's whatever I had around. And I really struggled with painting those first few months, and I didn't think, oh, the paintbrush is what's wrong. I thought, I'm a bad painter. This is just so hard. I'm working so hard, and everything is so difficult. Um, but I struggled through that, and in a way, I think that struggle made me a better painter. But once I started to switch to um, stiffer paintbrushes, everything felt easier all of a sudden. And I realized that the paintbrush was really causing me a lot of struggle, but this new one works a lot better. So if you're struggling, maybe try switching your paintbrush up. If you're working with a stiffer brush and that's causing you trouble, switch to a soft brush. That may help you out. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested in supporting me on Patreon, you can find out more at supportmal.com. And make sure you stay tuned for part two, which is all about caring for acrylic paintbrushes. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes.